we now come to chapter 8, and it's a place of special encouragement. So let's jump into it. We're going to look at Zechariah chapter 8, verses 1 to 5. Again, the word of the Lord of hosts came, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am zealous for Zion with great zeal, and with great fervor I am zealous for her. Thus says the Lord, I will return to Zion and dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Thus says the Lord of hosts, old men and old women shall again sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each one with his staff in his hand because of great age. The streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in its streets. God is zealous for Jerusalem, and when his presence is in the city, it will be a city of truth. Biblically, truth is a verb. Truth is what you do. Now, it's not to say that there are not actual facts. There are not actual moral absolutes. We're not saying that. that of course there is. But what we're saying is that truth in the Bible, and you'll see it right here as we go on into the chapter, truth is what you do. Zechariah in his prophecy tells us that when God's presence is in Jerusalem, Jerusalem will be a city of truth. Truth is the actions by which we live. Truth is how we actually treat each other. God calls for our hearts so that all that we do will be truth. All that Jesus did was truth. And he's looking for that in his followers. Sure, we want to understand the prophecies correctly. Sure, we want to obey God's transcendent moral values uh, exactly, of course. It's good to know what the facts, you know, how history interposes, how it connects with Bible prophecy, 457 BC and all those dates and facts. Those, those things are okay. Those are good. Those are important. There is that kind of truth. But we also, if we don't manifest the truth, then there's something wrong. Then God's kingdom is a fake. And so if we're off in that line, you know, it's a distortion. But instead, we want to be tuned up just right. God's people are to be his city of truth, his, his outpost, his moral outpost that he holds in a world in rebellion. The kingdom really, you know, if you've got guys that are half in and half out, they're kind of on their own stuff instead of God's stuff, that's not the kingdom. The kingdom is when we're really looking to be like Jesus, really looking to express that out into the world. So verses 4 and 5 picture Jerusalem as a thriving city. There are aged men, there are aged women in the streets. There is commerce, there's a relational city, there's stuff going on. Children, children are in the streets, little boys, little girls playing in the streets. The actual text says what? That the streets will be full, full of children. Now, this business about the old age and the children, that's interesting because, you know, in the new earth, when we're going to have glorified bodies, restored bodies, we're not going to have receding hairlines and wheelchairs. Uh, that stuff is going to be all from this ancient past at that time, you know, the old days of sin and suffering. But still, that picture is what we're used to. That's what we've all grown up with since Adam and Eve sinned, and we, we've joined them in, in sinning. So we, this is our picture. This is the way people live and die. You know, childhood, adulthood, old age. And so this is the picture that is used to help us see God's plan to, to restore his people, to give them maximal prosperity. Not, not a prosperity gospel, you know, like you're going to have all this great stuff. Maximal in terms of maximal goodness. A world in which goodness and unselfishness prevails, in which kindness and loving others prevails over loving self and getting stuff for me. We'll have these eternal ageless bodies. We will be virile. We will be uh, have beauty, unblemished, and we get to be a part of it, and we don't have to wait till then. We can be a part of it now. Heaven, heaven is not, you know, uh, 10,036 years that way. Heaven begins now on earth. So here then is a peek at some of the things that God wants to bestow upon his people. I think we're pretty focused, you know, on our own world. Most of the time we, we kind of think we know what pleasure is. We think we know what rejoicing is. Uh, we think we've got the good life today. We have only the smallest fraction of the good life today. Uh, this is a world tainted and damaged by sin. God is, is going to remake the whole place the way it was supposed to be. And it, but, but we don't have to wait. Part of the message is, Let's make the world what God would have it to be, even today. And may you and I have a little part, just a little part, in doing that. Mm -hmm.